Oh hey, didn't see you there. Welcome to Rad Time Customs. Hey, what's up? Donnie here from Rad Time Customs. Today I'm going to show you how to fabricate and install a French antenna into your vehicle using my customer's vehicle, a two-door Tahoe. Now aside from the French antenna, I've already fixed some hail damage. I shaved the roof rack and also shaved the third brake light. He also wants me to fill in the thumb tab for the gas lid and install a roll pan. I will also be welding the trim holes in the fender wells and giving it a bumper tuck, but for right now, let's focus on the French antenna. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is purchase an antenna, whether it be a power or a telescopic manual, but it's going to decide what size tubing you need, so you need it first. Your antenna should come with a rubber grommet and a bezel, and these are what you're going to use to decide what size tubing you need. Now that you're ready to purchase a tube, take the bezel and the rubber grommet with you. You want to make sure that it fits inside of the tube. You can always go a little bigger diameter, but it needs to at least fit inside. Now that you've decided on a tube size, you need to find a washer that either slips in or onto the tube that will be welded to the tube itself. Also, you need to make sure that the inner diameter of the washer slips over the threaded portion of your antenna. Since I have a washer that is not larger than the diameter of the tube, I'm going to use it to trace a line onto the fender to start marking for my cuts. When using this method, make sure you keep your pencil as vertical as possible, and you're also going to end up cutting inside of the line just in case you made any errors. Once you're happy with your outline, it's time to start cutting. Although I'll be doing most of my work with my angle grinder and my welder, I'm going to start with tin snips and clean up with the Dremel. The reason I'm not using a hole saw is because the hole is not in the middle of where the new hole needs to be. Starting with the existing antenna hole, I'm going to cut just shy of our marked line for our new antenna hole. Barbaric, yes, but also effective. Now that I've bent the cut areas upward, I'm going to simply take my angle grinder with a cutoff wheel and cut off all the existing pieces. I try to get as much done with my cutoff wheel because it's not going to produce as much heat as a grinding wheel or a flap disc might, thus keeping the panel cool. Now I can go back and smooth out all my cut marks and the hole for the antenna using my flap disc. Also being sure not to put too much pressure on it as it heats up the panel and if it starts to get too hot I can always cool it with some cold water. Now I'll take the tube, I'll slide it on top and check progress. It's always much easier to remove metal than it is to add it. Take note of the areas where the tube is still hitting and not allowing it to go into the fender. Either mark them or just carefully go around those areas with the flap disc, taking a little bit at a time. Now that the sides fit well, the tube can sit onto the fender. The only issue to deal with now is the lower area that will have a teardrop shape. So I can start working that area now that the sides are good. Now I'll be using the Dremel with a small grinder bit to not just go and clean up all the cut edges, but also to shape that teardrop that we need at the bottom of the hole. Now the tube slips into the fender, but it's also sitting crooked, which means we have to take more material off the bottom in the teardrop section. 
after using the Dremel to create a more aggressive taper, not only does it slide into the fender now, but it also stands straight up. Now that the tube goes into the hole nice and straight, it's time to decide how deep you want your antenna to sit. I'm not going to set this one down too far, but you could go all the way down as long as you have room for your antenna at the bottom. Now that I've decided how deep I want the antenna to set, I'm going to take my washer, my grommet, and my antenna bezel and use those to figure out where I need to mark my tubing of where it will be welded to the fender. I decided that looking at it from the side, I don't want to see the rubber grommet, but I do want to be able to see the bezel. So this is not a very deep recess, and this is how I went about accomplishing that. Since the washer I'm using will slide right into the tube, it can also act as the bottom. That means all I need to do is put the rubber grommet on top of the washer and trace it onto the tubing, and that's where it needs to sit into the fender. This will give you an idea of just how shallow I'm actually Frenching this antenna. Now that I know where it's going to sit, I can take my washer and weld it onto the tube. After attaching a long bolt with two nuts to the washer, I was able to slide it into the tube and weld it all together. After welding, I'll go ahead and grind it all down so I have a flat surface for the antenna to attach to. This is also a good time to decide if you need a drain tube. A drain tube is a tube that allows water to drain out. Being this short, it doesn't require a drain tube, so I can just slide it to the line and tack it in place. Once it's tacked, you can then start building your welds around the area. Make sure to keep it cool so you don't warp the panel. Now that I've welded completely around the tube into the fender, I'm going to cut the rest of the tube off right above the welds. The welds can also be used to create an outline ridge. My customer wants this perfectly smooth, so we won't be doing that. I will instead be smoothing it completely out with my flap disc on an angle grinder. The flap disc can produce a lot of heat, so make sure you stop to quench the area in between so you don't warp your panel. Now that it's all been smoothed out, I'll go back through and see if I need to weld up any pinholes and then I'll smooth those out as well. Once you're happy with your metalwork, it's time to use glazing putty. For such a small area and not using a whole lot, it would be really easy to just knock it down with 150 grit. Once you've smoothed out the glazing putty, it's time for primer. I used a couple coats of filler primer and it will get sanded once more as soon as the entire truck gets guide coated. Now since I was already cutting, welding, filling, and priming, I figured now was the best time to also take care of the gas door. It's really amazing how big of a difference such a small area can make. And so there you have it. Super easy modification that you can do in your garage. Uh, you get it done in probably a couple hours. Um, the materials, obviously you're going to need the antenna, the tube, the washer. Then you'll need some glazing putty and some primer. Uh, I mostly use my cutoff wheel and uh, with a flap disc to clean everything up. So if you got an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel and a flap disc, then you're good to go there. The tin snips did help. Um, especially being that it's a hard contour so I didn't have to worry too much about warping the area around it um, so just be very careful if you're gonna go the tin snip route like I did and just make sure you're not bending the whole panel around you go very very easy a little bit here and there and then just start start cutting it down and grinding it down um, also make sure that when you're using the flap disc especially that you're constantly keeping the panel cool. So keep yourself a little towel with cold water that you can just keep pressing on there because that flap disc does heat up the metal. And if you have, you know, 20 to 18 gauge steel uh, for your body, uh, for the fenders or the quarter panel, wherever you're doing it, then you can start warping it. So just make sure you keep it cool in between, uh, grind a little bit, hit it, grind a little bit, hit it. 
Just keep it cool so you don't warp anything. And lastly, if you are going to do this in an area that there isn't already an existing hole for an antenna, you can simply just, after you purchase your tubing, go get a hole saw. And as long as you know that you can keep the drill the hole saw is attached to upright, then you can just drill right down. Um, the reason I didn't do it on this one is because there was already the existing antenna hole. So as far as a, a pilot bit that's going to hold the hole saw in place, it wouldn't work because it's not only, it, it's, first of all, it's not in the center. It's, it's closer to the top. So it just, it wasn't going to work out. So that's why I did the tin snips. But if you're going to do this on an area like a fender that doesn't have an antenna already, or you're going to do it on a quarter panel, et cetera, et cetera, then as long as you know that you can keep that drill completely straight up, then you can run a hole saw down through it and not have to do what I had to do. Now, before you go, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and hit me in the comments. I want to know what you think about French antennas. Do you think that it's a dead custom item that should have been just left buried or do we need to start Frenching antennas again? Also too, what other type of stuff are you into? as far as shaved door handles, tucked bumpers, all the stuff that used to be really cool. Also hit us up on social media, um, Rad Time Customs. You'll be able to uh, see projects that are ongoing right now, uh, future projects for customers, future projects for myself. Um, we got a gasser I'm building right now and I got a little hot rod Model A and autocrossing a Mustang. We got this uh, Buick Wildcat that's getting restored at the moment. So, Rad Time Customs.